Okay, so this graph is probably the most complicated one uh, in this section because we have multiple transformations. In this case, we actually have four different transformations. So we got our base graph we'll do, and then we do the four different steps to get to our uh, final answer. Now, I'm going to show you that it doesn't matter what order you do these in. So the order I'm going to follow this one in is a slightly different than I've done for previous problems, but it's going to make it easier because we're dealing with this type of compression here. So the first one I'm going to do, of course, is going to be, you always begin with your base graph, so y equal x squared, and that's going to be our parabola that's going to look like this. We've got some key points here, and these all come from your library functions. We have 1, 1, we have 2, 4. I'll put the ones on this side also, negative 4, 2, or negative 2, 4, rather, and negative 1, 1. Okay, so that's going to be your uh, original key points that we have on that one. Of course, it's, it goes through also the 0, 0. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to work with just the inside part, the, the shift here on the inside. So I'm going to do just this graph, y equals quantity x minus 2 squared. Remember, we're always moving the graph opposite direction of what you see inside the parentheses there. So instead of, a, I mean, instead of moving it in a negative direction, we're going to move it in the positive direction. So that point is now going to be here, moves two places over. Now everything shifts over uh, two units. So essentially what you're saying is we're adding two to all the x values here to get the other points. So if I add two to this x value, I get zero four. So that's going to cross over right there. Instead of negative one one, I add two to that x value. It's now going to be here at one one. The one I add two also, it's going to now move over so at 1, 1, it's at 3, 1, which is there. The last one is at 2, 4. It's now going to be at 4, 4. Okay, so that's how that's where all the points are going to move over to. Every single one of them moves two places over to the right. Now, on the previous problems I've done, I've done the minus 1 and then done the negative. Instead, I'm actually going to apply the negative first. Okay, so I want to apply the negative, and then I'm going to apply the compression on the outside, and then finally I'll do negative 1. It's going to make that compression easier. If I have something that's based off of touching one of the axes, it's actually easier to do the compression that way. So let's flip it over. Now, when you do a negative on the outside, remember any negative on the outside flips it over the horizontal axis. It's still going to be at our same pivot point. It's still going to be at 2 comma 0. We just fix it here and we flip it down that way. This is our pivot point. So now the graph is going to go down like this. So instead of going through uh, positive 4, it's now going to flip and go through negative 4. This one is at over 1, up 1. We're going to go over 1, down 1, which means that's going to go right here. For symmetry, you can get the other ones. We know that we have to have another one at the same level here. And then this one, we go down as well. This has got to be same from here to here and from here to here as far as where the center is. So we got all those those points there and this is what the graph currently looks like. Now before we shift it down one unit, let's first deal with the one half on the outside. What that does, we're just going to do, so now this this graph here, let me, let's label it. The one that we did here was negative x minus 2 squared, just so you know which one we're doing. This next one, the graph that we're going to do here, is we're going to do negative one-half x minus two squared. That's the one that we're going to graph here. What that does, negative one-half, it's going to take this graph, and it's going to take all of the y values and cut them in half. All right, so instead of the, like for instance, these right here, instead of that going through zero, negative four, if we cut that in half, it's only going to go down half that way. So this is actually now going to cross over at 0, 2. Now, of course, we still have our same pivot point right there. And we can also go over 2 and then down 2 here because of symmetry. So again, these two points that were here, they got cut in half. So instead of at 0, negative 4, it's at 0, 
negative 2. Same with this point. This one went through negative 4. If you multiply negative 4 times a half, that's going to take that to negative 2, and that's going to be right here. So now our graph is going to look something like this. Now these points we can also show as well, but those are going to deal with halfway points. Instead of going down 1, it would go down a half, and so then that would be about right here and right here. But if you just show these other points, that, that would be enough to show the shape of the graph. So notice what happened here. Graph was kind of longer, and what that one half did was it kind of smashed it. So it's, a type, it's called compression because you're compressing that one together and looked like that. Okay, so now the last thing we're going to do is we, have, we need to take this graph and shift that graph down one unit. Okay, so originally it was at this point uh, here, it was at 2 comma 0. We're going to move it down one unit, which means it's now going to go through here. We had a, this point that went down at, uh, it was at 0, negative 2. It's now going to be at 0, negative 3 because it got shifted down one because of this in the end. Over here in the end, this point was at 4, negative 2. It's now going to be at 4, negative 3. And I'm just going to use these three points for reference as far as graphing it. So this right here would be your final answer. We say that this is going to be negative one half x minus two squared and now we included the negative one so this would be our final answer for this so again as long as you just draw them out and just do it step by step that makes these easier to do so we just do one transformation at a time and we label each one so that way we know where we're at and what each transformation does